The last words of any man are significant, but how much more when those last words are spoken by the God-man, the Lord Jesus? In today's study, we visit the cross and listen to the final words of Christ spoken just before his death. You will find that they hold tremendous truth and application for all of us who live on this side of the cross. Open your Bible and let's join Scott Pauley now at Calvary. Each of the seven sayings of Christ from the cross in a way stands alone. Each of them has a definite message about who he is, what he was doing, a message about what he was enduring, and an application for us. But at the same time, like pearls on a strand, they're also all connected to one another. And seeing their connection uh, is so important, I think. Now, we don't know all of the chronology of the sayings. Some people have tried to give that a perfect order. We don't know all of that perfectly, but we know these are the things the Holy Spirit has recorded for us that he did say. I think it's important, though, to see how they connect to one another. And I'm trying to connect in your thinking Matthew 27, uh, 46, and Luke 23, 46. In Matthew 27, 46, he cries, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And in Luke 23, verse 46, he cries, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And so we're moving from the why to the what. <laughs> from why hast thou forsaken me to what Jesus did. And what did he do? He put himself back in the hands of the Heavenly Father. Let's review what we've learned already from these, these two wonderful statements. First of all, uh, we're learning something about Christ's separation and our reconciliation. Why was he forsaken? Uh, so that we could receive eternal life, what we receive. Then we've learned something about Christ's question and our consolation. He asked why, and so there's great comfort and consolation in that for us. We all ask why, and so here's what we know, uh, that all men ask, and it's okay to ask as long as you ask your great God. Bring your questions and fears to the Lord. But then one more truth from these two cries. We see in it Christ's dedication and our instruction. He doesn't end with, my God, my God, why? He ends with, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And so we're moving from the why to the what. Here's what we can do. Look, his last words are our lasting example. When the Lord comes near the end, it's not the final word, but it's close, He's saying to the Father, Father, I'm just putting it all back into your hands. But I recommend today that you do the same thing. If it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Take your life, take your situation, take your circumstance, take your hurt, take it all, and just put it all in the hands of the Heavenly Father. Rest in the perfect love of your good Father. Oh, look at your Father's hands. They're loving hands. They're strong hands. You're in his hands. John chapter 10, you're in the hand of the Father. Live so there's nothing between you and your Father. So at the lowest moment, you can pray and put your whole life day after day after day in his capable hands. This is really a statement of, of complete surrender, of total consecration. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, notice what he does not say. He's not concerned here about his body. That he has sacrificed. I mean, he's been slaughtered. He, he literally is bloodied and bruised and beaten and dying. But it's not just his body he's commending to the Father. Look at it carefully. Into thy hands I commend my what? My spirit. The spirit is the deepest part of a man. It's the longest living thing. It's the eternal part. He commends that back to the Father. Oh, this is beautiful. You begin to commend your spirit to God at the moment of salvation. You give him your heart, your life, your eternal destiny, your, your soul. Uh, but friend, all through your journey, at every twist and turn, in every trial of life, what must we constantly do? We must come back to that same loving Father and say, Father, if I can trust you for heaven, I can trust you for here. If I can trust you to keep me out of hell, I can trust you for this hardship. If I can trust you for what I've never seen, I can trust you for what's staring me in the face. And so we're constantly just recommitting ourselves into the Father's hands. That's a mark of everybody who is a true follower of Christ. To all who would conquer in the end, 
you have to be wholly given to God. Don't get stuck on the why. Move to the what. Some people live their whole life and they let their hurts define them. What somebody else did to them, they let that define them. And might I say, detour them. I'm glad Jesus' last word was not, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? No, he turns right around and just commits himself back to the Father again. Uh, what a confidence in the love of the Heavenly Father that even after being what at that moment he was forsaken, he knew that he could still trust the Father. Oh, you can trust the Father today. Put it in his hands. Put yourself in his hands. Put others in his hands. Put circumstances in his hands. Put injustice in his hands. Romans chapter 12, verse number 11. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. In other words, just put it all in his hands. Do you remember what Paul said? Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. And by the way, when you put all in the Father's hands, you can be sure the Father will answer. You see, three days later, Jesus rose from the dead alive forevermore. God the Father raised him from the dead. Forty days later, the Father received him back to glory. And forever, for eternity, the Father has given him a name, Philippians chapter 2, that is above every name. Yes, the Father always answers our prayer. And the Father always honors our surrender. Take your life today and put it in the hands of a loving Heavenly Father and rest in this, dear one. You can trust Him. My favorite book of the Bible is the book of Philippians. I love Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6. Being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus knew this was not the end. There was more to come. There's, there's hope in his prayer. Do you hear it? There's a future in his prayer. Hebrews says that he endured the cross and he despised the shame for the joy that was set before him. He was looking beyond it all. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, how about these words? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, Paul wrote, Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Do you actually believe uh, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is your Father? Uh, do you believe that he's a loving Father and a good Father and the eternal Father? And do you understand that everything you put in his hands is in good hands and in good keeping I wonder today if you'd make this prayer of our Lord Jesus your own prayer. Right where you are, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I give you me. If you've never been saved, call on the Father now. Tell him you believe on his Son. Repent of your sin. Put your faith in him. Put your all in his hands. God the Father will bring you into his family. And if you are a child of God, then speak to him as your Father and say to him and affirm Again today, I know whom I have believed. I am persuaded you are able to keep that which I've committed to you against that day. Oh, these cries from the cross. And they were not only good for Christ on that day, they are good for us today. And I want to challenge you to make Luke 23, 46 your own prayer today. Even in your brokenness, even in your hurt, even in your wound, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Can you hear the cries from the cross? In each of these Holy Spirit-inspired words, God has a message for us. We hope that through this study, you will come to know and love the Lord Jesus in a deeper way. For more information on a personal relationship with Christ or for helpful devotional resources, please visit us at enjoyingthejourney.org. You will have access to hundreds of articles, full-length Bible messages, and the complete Enjoying the Journey broadcast library. Remember that only as you follow God's Word will you find Christ's joy.